Hello, everybody. It's Pastor Jen here at the International Christian Fellowship Rome. I want to thank you for joining the online service today. As we finish summer and we move into this new season of fall and maybe new work uh, responsibilities and children's ministry and um, young adult ministry here at ICF Rome and online, I want you to know I'm praying for you. This service that you're joining today is truly a moment for you to get refilled with the power of God for the next week. So I have prayed that as you enter into worship, as you enter into listening to the word of God, that you will say to the Lord, what do I need for this week that God will make me stronger, that will make my faith the living proof to those around me? So I welcome you today and I pray that God gives you a wonderful word of encouragement as you join the service. Hey, good morning and welcome to the bridge. Let's all stand to our feet. We got a brand new song I want to introduce to you guys this morning. But you join with us when you figure it out. Let's put those hands together. Come on. You are the one true eternal key. And all creation sings. You are the one different from the rest. There's resurrection in
worship you and give you praise. Would you join with us as we continue? Come on, we sing this out. to read from Psalm 16, 5 and 6. You, Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. How wonderful are your gifts to me. How good they are. Most of us are conversant with the fact that our money, our income is from God. So we'll come to that. There are three ways to give your money. We'll come to that. Let's look at the other gifts that God gives us. He gives us life. He gives us abilities. He gives us our talents. He gives us so many things that is not money. But the same way we know when it's time for offering, we come and put our offering, our tithes. Have we considered our time, our lives? What is the tithe of your life? 10%, how do you even calculate it? So the idea, the same way with the money, he gave you the money, and you come with a little bit to say thank you. 
to actually worship offering is worship so the same way i will encourage us to also give of our time and talents that he has given us and there are so many opportunities we are starting the connect to grow class today lesson one so if you missed last week it was just introduction today is lesson one after the first service go through these doors and you can join we also have it online um, on tuesday but you need to give us your details to send you the zoom link and then two weeks from now we're going to have the event the servolution where you can decide what you want to give your talents or your time to in the service in this in this place so there are so many ministries you can contribute to and i keep saying never come to rome and leave without serving in church amen so like i said there are three ways to give of your money there's in person you got these envelopes when you walked in you can that's the first way to give you just come dancing and put them on my right and on my left you can also give online at the church website there are instructions if you're watching online you see the bank details uh, going up on your screen there's also the pos machine that our brother bose will help in the back so if you just go to my right you're going to see bose and you can give with your bank card just tell him how much you want to give and he will deduct it for you amen can we stand and pray Thank you, Father, for giving us all these wonderful gifts. We bring just a little bit of it back to you to say thank you and to worship you and to believe in you for more. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Touch our hearts that as you've blessed us, we will bless others with our money, but also with the talents and the time you've given us. Take the glory in our lives and in our giving. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God is faithful. And so um, today I have the privilege of welcoming Pastor Al and Chrissy Toledo to the stage from Chicago slash Brooklyn slash Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. I am so honored and humbled. Come on in that you, um, do we need that microphone? I'm not sure which one. Uh, we are just so honored and humbled that you are both here. Chrissy has written um, an amazing book about her story. She, uh, I got to meet and hear her at General Council when I was there with thousands of ministers in the U.S. Pastor Al is going to share with you also just what God has laid on his heart. But one thing I appreciated so much is that um, a friend actually connected us from Illinois. And he said these are like stellar leaders and then we were having this leadership summit and marvin said yes let's let that be the capstone today and so thank you for uh giving your time and your ministry to us and i just invite you to let the people know all about you and uh i mean their bio is amazing you can see it online too but uh for those of you that have ever heard of the brooklyn tabernacle singers chrissy is a symbola her parents were the pastors and leaders of the brooklyn tab and uh but god you know it doesn't matter who your parents are on this earth hear me it matters who your father in heaven Hallelujah. is. Amen. And so, Chrissy, I invite you just to give them a greeting, and then Pastor Al, take your liberty. We're here. We're hungry. We want to grow. Say, I want to grow. grow. And so we welcome our online campus, and I just encourage you as you share with your heart, okay? Thank you so much. Greetings to all of you from... Uh, and to all of you watching online, we're so glad that you're with us here in Rome today. We're so happy to be here. This is a dream come true. This is a country that we love from the bottom of our hearts, that's for sure. And to be at a church that's so international, such as this one, is, a, is truly a privilege. We come from uh, sending greetings from two churches today. One is in Chicago, that is our mother church, and um, that's the church we planted 21 years ago. It is called the Chicago Tabernacle. And then just a little over a year ago, we planted Philadelphia. Philadelphia Tabernacle. So one is in Illinois. That's where your pastor is from. And the other one at Philadelphia is in Pennsylvania. It's another state in the USA. So we're, we're sending greetings from all of our people that are just like you. Love the Lord with all their hearts. Amen. Amen. And it's so cool that in 
just, uh, you know, six hours from now or something like that, uh, our churches will be gathering, doing the very same thing, worshiping God, giving in worship, and receiving the word. So before my husband comes, he's my favorite preacher in the whole world. And I don't just say that, but he is. You're, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're in for a treat. Um, but anyway, uh, I just want to introduce us by telling you where we're from. And then this is our family. A picture is going to come up. That is our family. My husband and I, we were blessed with three children who are now all married. And we have five grandchildren. That's four there. But we have one that uh, our daughter-in-law in the middle next to my husband was expecting our first granddaughter at the time. So we have four boys and one girl. And they live in different states in the, in the U.S. And we're just so blessed. We're so blessed. We can never forget all that God has done for us. Amen. Amen. There they are. Amen. And then the next slide, real quick. Yes, that's our granddaughter. And then what the next slide, I believe, is the DNA of a leader. Could you put that up? So if you were in, we didn't bring the books with us, but you could have easy access to the website, uh, www.dnaofaleader.org. If you're interested in a study that helps uh, your spiritual formation. With, by that, I mean this. Um, how many know that you have to be privately healthy to be publicly fruitful? And that's what DNA of a Leader is all about. My husband wrote it years ago. This has kind of been his life journey. And uh, it's powerful for your personal life, for your staff at your church, for your family at home. Um, but that's one thing. And then the last thing we have with us, this is my story. Now, this one is in Italian. Let's see if I can say it. La ragazza della canzone. How's that? And not bad. Uh, so this is the Italian version. A friend of ours in Milan, he, was, he published this for me years ago when my book came out. He sent them. So they are here available. However, I brought 30 English books and left them in my hotel room. So what I'm going to do is leave them uh, here. And next Sunday, if you're here, uh, I'd love to make them available to you. They typically go for about 20 euros. We'll leave them here for about 10 euros each. It would be my blessing to be able to give them that way. And so they'll be here next Sunday. That's called Girl in the Song. Again, we have the Italian. What it is is my story. It took me three years to write. But it is um, very intense. Uh, front row seat you have on a pastor's daughter, that was me, who fell away from the Lord and did a lot of things that, but for the grace of God, I wouldn't even be here today. So praise the Lord. He, it shows how uh, the road into sin, my life during that time, and then the road out of sin and how through prayer, God delivered me and set me free. So thank you for having us. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Buongiorno, that's all I got. And hello to all of our online family. We are always so grateful and appreciate that you are dialing in. It's so exciting to me because the Spirit of the Lord is in Chicago and Philadelphia and here in Rome and wherever you are, the Spirit of the Lord is with you. And I am really, really honored, excited to be able to just share a simple truth um, with you this morning. I know that you've had a whole, uh, a whole week of studying leadership at the Leadership Summit. And I was asking myself, oh, Lord, when people have received so much truth, how do you tie it all up? And so the Lord put a very, very simple word on my heart about the leadership lesson that you're always learning. I want to talk to you about the leadership lesson that you're always learning. And this leadership lesson will come from the book of Mark chapter 8. We'll turn to that momentarily. And this is one of those stories that is in each of the Gospels. The feeding of the 4,000 or the 5,000 are in every gospel. Jesus made sure that this miracle and actually this leadership lesson, because that's what it really was, was in all four gospels. And we're going to be looking at, even though the details are different, there's something that is very consistent in all of them. 
And let me just say this before I unpack uh, this verse, these verses to you. First of all, everyone who is a Christian is a leader. Everybody say, I am a leader. Everyone is a leader because you are the light of the world. The Bible says that we are the light of the world and people are waiting for you to show them the way. Somebody say amen. amen. It is the call of God upon every person's life. And like my wife said, the way you become a leader in the kingdom of God, never forget this, is first you become privately healthy by getting close to God. And then naturally through that attachment, there's a flow that makes you publicly fruitful. Leadership is not separated from God. It's attachment that leads to flow. Somebody say amen. That's the way it is. And all of us are called to lead. You see, we tend to see leadership as positional when actually leadership is decisional. The way we decide to live our lives, the way we decide the, the choices that we make on how we will surrender our lives to God, those decisions, those choices are the things that actually turn you and I into a leader. A surrendered life is a powerful life. Somebody say amen. Amen. You know, I, I heard recently that John Maxwell, anybody here know John Maxwell? John Maxwell has written more leadership books than anyone else in history. But here's what I would say. One mom is giving out more advice than John Maxwell for those 18 or 20 years. Moms, you are the John Maxwell of that home. Somebody say amen. You are offering the leadership principles that build a nation. Somebody say amen. My mother is the one who taught me. Our fundamental evangelistics uh, strategy came from my mom. I grew up in the hood, hood in Brooklyn, New York. Very, very bad neighborhood. It was so bad that when we went outside, my parents would tell all of the neighbors, if you see my kids doing anything that they shouldn't be doing, send them upstairs. We lived in a five-story apartment, no elevator. I hated going up and down the stairs. And sometimes people would just open up the window and say, Al, go upstairs. And I had to go upstairs. If I didn't, big trouble. And one day I said to my mom, why in the world do these people keep sending me upstairs? And here's what my mother said to me. She said, I love those people. And I said, why? She said, because when someone loves your children, you love them. And when we planted the Chicago Tabernacle, the first thing we did, we put our first and our best dollars towards the children of the community. Because when you love people's children, they open their hearts to you. How many know that's John Maxwell for free right there? How many would say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Moms, dads, college students, I see a lot of young people in this church. Can I tell you, you are a leader. And the way you choose to surrender your life to Christ will transform you into the person that makes a mighty impact wherever you go. Listen, before I read this, I, I want to tell you, when Chrissy and I were dating over, over 32, going on 32 years, long time, I used to have to go travel and visit her, and I remember stopping one morning at a, I'll never forget this, it's marked me for life. So I stopped on a, one of those uh, gas station McDonald's on the highway, and there were so many people. I mean, McDonald's was packed, and it was four lines deep, and I'm standing there. You see everyone unhappy to go to work like this. But there was this one little lady saying, good morning. How, how can I help you? And, and right in front of me was a big man with a suit on. And, and, and everybody, everybody was thinking the same thing. What did this lady have for breakfast? And so when he gets up, he says, and he had a deep voice, he said, uh, Miss, I'm sorry, everyone here is wondering, but I'm going to ask. 
He says, what is it that makes you so bright and alive? And she said, sir, she got right up under his face. She said, that is such an easy answer. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that makes my day. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. That's leadership. That's real leadership. That's the kind of leadership that changes the world. Everyone is a leader. Now, before I read this text, let me just say this. The interaction in all four Gospels is always between Jesus and the disciples. 4,000, 5,000, if you add the women and the children, 10,000, 12,000 people are ministered to, but the essence of the interaction is between Jesus and the disciples. And so I want to read to you what Jesus was trying to do. Listen to this. He wanted to feed the people's bellies while at the same time feed the leader's faith. That's what's happening in this story. He wanted to feed the people's bellies while at the same time feeding the leader's faith. Mark chapter 8 says this. Not long afterwards, another large crowd came together. And when the people had nothing left to eat, Jesus called the disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for these people because they have been with me for three days and now have nothing to eat. If I send them home without feeding them, they will faint as they go because some of them have come a long way. His disciples asked him, now I, I, I want you to look at me, I'm going to read this, but I want you to look at me for a second. Here's Jesus talking to them, and he says, he presents the dilemma, and here's what happened. His disciples asked him, where in this desert can we find enough food to feed all these people? Jesus right here. And they said, where in this vast desert will we find enough, will we find food to feed all of these people? Happened, they, they record it four times. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked. Seven loaves, they answered. He ordered, the crown to, he ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took seven loaves, gave thanks to God, broke them, and he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the crowd, and the disciples did so. Remember, when it comes to serving, Jesus will always hand it to you. We don't do it. He does it. Somebody say amen. Amen. They also had a few small fish. Jesus gave thanks for these and told the disciples to distribute them too. Everybody ate and had enough. There were about 4,000 people. Then the disciples took up seven basketfuls of pieces left over. Jesus sent the people away and at once got into his boat with his disciples and went to the district of Dalmanutha. So this is the leadership lesson after being in ministry for I, uh, close to now 30 some odd, 35 years. This is the leadership lesson that never changes. This is the one, and honestly, there have been many, many times where I have said to the Lord, Lord, really again? Do we got to go through this again? But this leadership never, ever goes away. And as wonderful as principles are, God wants you to tie all of your leadership principles with faith. And therefore, that lesson, which is the title of my message, is this. Provision is always possible. Provision is always possible. And this was the lesson he wants every leader to cap capture and carry deep in his soul. I know, listen, if you're watching online, I know that this is obvious. I know that this is obvious, but I'm telling you right now, sometimes what's obvious is easy, is easy to overlook, okay? And if you're a college student, if you're a single mom, if you're a business leader, always remember, provision is always possible. Let's say that together, ready? Provision is always possible. God wants you to always have in your hearts as you face conflict, challenges, difficulties, as you have leadership problems, life problems, life situations, God always wants us to say, provision is always possible. 
Very, very important, brothers and sisters. Here's what's true. A leader without faith is a big miss. And sometimes a leader without faith becomes a big disaster. When you don't have faith, you become vulnerable to secular solutions, which will lead you astray. And when you don't have faith, you will become vulnerable to demonic suggestions. See, sometimes we pick what the devil offers us because we've lost our faith. No matter what we're facing, we need to remember that provision is always possible. Come on, let's lift our hands right now. If you're watching online, Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this house and every believer that's watching online. And God, I pray that you would take the next few moments and that you would build our faith in the name of Jesus. Without faith, it's impossible to please you, Lord God. And God, I pray that you would add faith to all of our learning. I pray that you would add faith faith to every teaching, God. Add faith to our leadership that we might bring you glory. So bless this word in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. 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 Over and over and over, God wants to keep reminding his people that he's right here. Provision is always possible. It's the big lesson. And listen, provision comes in many forms comes in the form of a solution. You may have a problem and you don't have the answer. How many know God has the answer? How many know God always has the answer to our problems? He knows what that solution is. Sometimes it's a resolution. Uh, We have conflict. God is able to resolve our conflicts. God is able to heal our families. He's able to heal our marriages in Jesus' name. He's able to restore our relationships with with our children because provision is always possible. It's not us trying to figure it out. And let me tell you right up front, don't ever try to figure out God's miracle. Let God figure out the miracle. Then sometimes it's literally a provision, God meeting a need. Now, this text teaches us that provision is always possible when we do two things. When we do two things, a little sip here. Number one, you have to get close. Everybody say, get close. Actually, get closer. So here it is. Here it is. Jesus is presenting the problem, and naturally, it's human nature for us to do this. We have a problem in life. Jesus is right here. And we go, how are we going to fix this? Okay? How are we going to fix this? Jesus speaks again to Draw the attention back to him. Everybody say, get closer. So they're saying, Lord, this is a huge situation that you're placing upon us. We feel the pressure. Pressure will make you forget that Jesus is with you. But when the pressure is on, we need to get closer. When the things get challenging, if you are a leader, guess what? You will have problems. That's why you're in leadership, okay? Because leaders are called to have problems. That's why you're the man of the home. That's why you're the head of the house. Because people are looking to you to lead the way. And the greater the pressure, how many know the greater we got to get close and press in? Pressing in when the pressure is on is the great separator when it comes to great leadership and poor leadership. Jesus was saying, don't look away, look to me. And here's why. Closeness leads to clarity and calm. And if you're watching online and you're about to make some big decisions in your life, do not make that decision until you get closer. Until you grab hold of him. Nearness leads to strength. Somebody say amen. You know, in the Proverbs chapter 30, it gives us this this magnificent picture of four creatures that are very small and yet very wise. I want to read about two of them to you real quickly. Proverbs chapter 30, 
uh, verse 24 says this. There are four things on earth that are small but unusually wise. Okay? Um, uh, hyraxes, they aren't powerful. Maybe you don't feel powerful. Maybe you don't feel able or capable. It says, but they make their homes among the rocks. Then it says, lizards are easy to catch, but they are found even in king's palaces. So here's what the rock badger does. What the rock badger does is when the storm comes, the rock badger goes and hides in the rocks. And how many know there are a lot of things that can blow you and me away, but when we're in the rock Christ Jesus, nothing can blow us away. We got to get closer. When the Bible speaks of the lizard being caught with the hand, that in king's palaces, if you look up, it also means the holy of holies. So even if you're vulnerable to sin or weakness, do you know when you battle with sin and temptation, the key thing to do is to retreat into the presence of God. Get closer. Everybody say get closer. That was the key. Listen, on March 13th, 2017, a massive flood hit a village in Zimbabwe. A 38-year-old woman miraculously survived the flood by hanging on to a tree. For six hours with her two-month-old baby strapped on her back, guess what she did? She held on tight, and the flood came, but she held on tight to that tree. This reminds me, in the Bible, when it talks about David's, possibly David's worst moment of ministry took place when he was, when his own men turned upon him, and the Bible says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. You know what that literally means? It means to bind yourself on a rock to tie yourself to Jesus don't make the decision until you tie yourself to Jesus somebody say amen, amen. leadership begins your best decisions begin when you get closer if they could send me a keyboard player I'm going to say one more thing very quickly leadership is so much pressure it's so difficult so challenging if you really want to make a difference it gets very very hard and challenging and so you got to get closer to God and then I want you to notice the second thing that this will happen over for the rest of your life over and over and over again here's what you're gonna have to do you have to offer what you have you have to offer what you have remember you always have something to offer God everybody here when your back is up against the wall, you always have something to offer to God. Jesus said, they were talking about what they didn't have, and Jesus was saying this, what do you have? What do you have? Now look, we've had cycles of this. I mean, I, I, could, I could tell you story after story. I'm going to tell you one story. God called us. We left the church of 10,000 people. God called us to start a church. He said, go to a city. Do you know anybody there? No. Do you have friends there? No. Do you have a launch team? No. Okay. If you had, whatever we had, we had nothing but us. So we moved to another city and her dad said to us, don't move. Our kids were crying. They didn't want to leave grandparents on both sides. They were broken hearted. Two of them cried for two days. We didn't even send them to school. They were so broken hearted to leave, but we knew the Lord said, go. And see, leadership is choosing God's way, even if it's the hard way. Somebody say amen. So we go. We, we, we go to the city, we're looking for a house. I'm standing, I'm sitting by the Chicago River. You got the Tigris, we got the Chicago River. And I said, Lord, you sent us here. I'm telling you right now, I'm not calling daddy, her dad. If we get in trouble, I'm not calling daddy. You have to provide for us. And by the way, he already said, look, we'll send you with 300 people. We'll, t we'll pay your salaries for two years. Start a church here in New York and Brooklyn. We said, no, God sent us to Chicago. So we start the church. God does a couple of great things we're up to we went from 
we found a group of 20, then we went to 60, then we're at, I don't know, we're at about 150 people, second year maybe. And then the, a, a great recession hits the U.S. We go week one, week two, week seven, week eight, no paycheck. People were losing their jobs, people were getting sick. It was February. Don't ever visit Chicago in February. It's dark, it's cold, it's difficult. We, it was me and another guy, we were painting the gym. And we get a phone call from the sister in the church who was our biggest giver. So she calls, somebody left a phone, so I'm gonna use it. So she calls, Pastor Toledo, how are you? I was like, good, my sister, how are you? I said, how are you doing? She said, I'm good, but I just got laid off for my job. Went like this, I literally went. Praise the Lord, my sister. God's going to help you. Okay, we hung up. I looked over at my friend. And he said, I read this morning, be strong, take heart, and wait for the Lord. So we went from the gym, and we went into a sanctuary about the same size. It was just me and him. I actually left my phone someplace else, and we started to walk around. We started to walk up and down. I love sanctuaries. I still to this day are sanctuary is, is beautiful big now all these things I love I go in there by myself because of the first leadership lessons and look we started to pray and we started to pray and here's what we said what we said is this God we have nothing except your promise to us your word to us which was go you told us go and so Lord they will kick us out of this building, but we're not leaving here. In case you forgot where we are, we're not leaving here. God, we will wait for you. We will wait for you. We will wait for you. We will grab hold of you. We believe you, mighty King. You will come through because this is your will for our lives. We prayed like that we cried out see sometimes the way your faith grows it only grows when you get desperate for God so we did and we knew when we broke through I went downstairs and grabbed my phone there was a message it's a true story there was a message um, this pastor called me I called this man back, didn't even know who it was. He says, I've been to your church one time. You don't know me. I was praying and God spoke to me and he told me to give you $100,000. Wait. He said, something happened. He came upon me. He told me, give you $100,000. He said, I heard you're going to be at this event four weeks from now, three weeks from now. If, if you go there, I'll bring you the check. I was like, three more weeks, Lord? But it's... He said, it's going to be at so-and-so? Yes. I said, okay. So I went downstairs. I got in my car. I drove to that corner. I waited three weeks like this. <laughs> Listen, he gave us that check. We went from red to black. And that moment became a defining moment for who we are and how we would see life and over and over and over. Can I tell you something? Powerful things happen to your life and leadership when you really understand that provision is always possible. Could we put our hands together and bless him? So come on, stand to your feet right now. If you're watching online, I want you to stand to your feet. And here's what we're going to do just for a few moments. I want you to keep your hands down for a few moments, but is there anyone here right now that you need God to provide something? It could be a family conflict. You need resolution. 
life. It could be a problem that needs to be solved. You need a solution or actually literally a provision from God. If that's you, God wants you to turn your face to Him, to take hold of Him and to say, here I am, God, I offer myself to you. I surrender myself to you. If that's you, just lift your hand so I could see. Many, many people, you know what? Slip out of your seat and run. Come closely, come quickly to the altar and we're just gonna begin to pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come praying, lift your voice right now. Begin, say, God, we trust you. God, we believe you, we trust you. I offer myself to you. Hallelujah, I offer myself to you, Lord God. Come on, don't figure out the miracles. Say, here I am, God. I will not let you go. This is the greatest leadership lesson, the lesson of faith. We trust you. We trust you. Come on, take it in your mouth. Say, I trust you, God. Say, I believe you, Jesus. I believe you. You're faithful. You're good, Lord God. You'll never fail me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're the God of breakthrough. You're the God of power. You're the God of solutions. You're the God of resolutions, oh God. You're the God of provision, Lord Jesus. Baptize your people with faith right now in Jesus' name. We pray for faith in the name of Jesus. Faith is what makes us leaders. Faith is what makes us lead the way, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Move by your mighty power. Okay, everyone grab someone's hand and we're going to pray. I'm going to give the mic to Pastor Pasquale, but we're going to pray right now. You have the answer. Don't figure out the miracle. Just say, God, I offer myself to you, Lord Jesus. We get closer to you. We believe you for the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Come on, pray to the left. Pray to the right. Bring the breakthrough by your mighty power, Lord Jesus. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, God, we love you. Lift your hands together. Hold them up together like you're holding someone else's arms. This is the moment I, I felt a breakthrough. When you ran to this altar, the Holy Spirit began to respond to your hunger. He began to say, you're drawing closer to me, and I will provide all you need. Father, God, we thank you. We thank you that we draw closer. We thank you that everything we need, the provision is always possible. God, our faith is coming alive today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, there's going to be miracles. There's going to be healings. There's going to be a turnaround in your circumstance. There's going to be a turnaround of provision in your situation. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Press in right now. Whether you're in the back of the room or the front of the room, the Holy Spirit is drawing you. Jesus is saying, come closer. Come closer. Hold on to the rock, Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you for those who are praying together all over this building, all over this city. We're going to begin to be leaders in this city. We're going to draw closer to God. When someone comes to us, we're going to say, yes, the difference is Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am so very thankful that every time we hear the word of the Lord, he does something in our hearts and minds. So I want to invite you right now, maybe there's been something in your life that has pulled you away from the love of Christ. Maybe you didn't remember that you are loved by God, that you are the proof that he is with you. And so right now I invite you to pray with me that Jesus would take control of every area and give everything back to God. Stop holding on to it. Put it in his hands and let him take care of it. So I invite you right now to pray this prayer with me to make Jesus number one in every aspect of your life. Dear Lord Jesus, you say it right there. Dear Lord Jesus, 
I ask you right now to take control of every area of my life. I give you all my fears, all my doubts, all my mistakes. I receive your forgiveness, Lord. I receive your new mercy. And from this day forward, for the rest of my life, I will cling to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I also want to pray with those who have, are in need of a miracle. We have seen, really, the lame walk, the blind eyes open. We have seen prodigals come back home. And maybe today you've been watching online and you just waited till this last prayer because you needed the move of God in your family, in your situation, in your circumstance. I want you to know that as we pray, the power of the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. The angels in heaven are standing on guard and the Lord says, send them over there. Send them over there. Put a shield around that one. So agree with me right now for your miracle in motion. God is doing it. I want your faith to come alive. I don't want you to doubt or wonder if God sees you or hears you because he does. So Father, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that that everyone who calls ICF Rome online and on campus, their church, that they would know they're not alone. They're a part of this family of faith where people are praying for them around the world, across the seas. I pray for the one who needs cancer healed. I pray for the one who needs diabetes healed. I pray for the one whose shoulders and hips are having joint and bone problem in the name of Jesus. I pray for the one who has turmoil in their family, that the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension would flow in that home right now, Lord God. You know the circumstances. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Emmanuel, God with us. So I want you to agree with me. You are my Jehovah Emmanuel. You are my Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You are my Jehovah Shalom, my peace. You are Jehovah Emmanuel. You are with me. So God, I bless your people. I pray that as we go into our workplaces, our learning places, our family places, that we would walk in with a new joy, a new hope, and a new peace that God's got this. And I am the living proof that God is at work. I love you. I thank you for being a part of all that we're doing here. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for the ways that you participate on Wednesdays and on Sundays. I love you. I pray you have safe travel wherever you're moving around and that we'll see you next week online.